We've been around 25 years and we can now look back and see some of the great things that have happened. Utah is a great place to live today, but we didn't get here by accident. It's helpful for Utahns to think back and remember what the 1980s were like. We had seven consecutive years of net outmigration. What in the 80s was a major problem of economic decline in the 1990s then became a problem of dramatic growth in the state. We want to grow faster and have jobs and homes and livings for everybody. But on the other side of the coin, we don't want to have more traffic and poorer air. We were seeing open space that began to disappear. Water was beginning to become short. We did not know how to grow well, but the economy was just churning and producing jobs. Growth became our constant companion. We got to find a balance going forward. There's a time in the life of every problem. When it's big enough, you can see it and small enough you can still do something about it. Political leaders and business leaders and other people concerned about the future all were trying to do something separately and found that they, they could not create momentum sufficient to bring change. What was required was a convener, someone who could begin to not only coordinate but focus how we would proceed so that we weren't simply this effort going this way and another effort going, we were coordinated as a community. They started Envision Utah as an effort to look at the growth that was coming, consider the options for the future, and engage everyone in the state in planning for and preparing for the future. What made Envision Utah, I think, unique was its stand-alone-ness, if I can use that word that's not a word, that put Envision Utah in a position of being and yeah, it's a bit cliched term, right? But being the honest broker. The goals at the outset were to create a generation of planners in Utah, a generation of people who were committed to the idea that we had to think proactively and think long-term to be able to shape the future of the state the way we want it. I think it was just apparent to everybody that if you think about it, there's a pretty good chance you'll do it better than if you don't. If you just stand by and watch, You've no one to blame but yourself for what happens. The other goal was to make sure that everyone across Utah, not just elected officials or not just state leaders, but everyone was involved in creating the future. I had seen a tool in the steel industry about understanding the values of communities. It was called Values and Strategy Assessment. We used it to understand what Utahns really wanted in their future. We were the first region to really use a sophisticated tool to understand what Utahns really had in their hearts as their desires for the future. It's easy to ask the public, what would you like your community to look like in the future? It's hard for them to visualize, well, this is what we have today, what else could it look like? But if you can hone in on these values, the things that we care about in our communities, the things that we want to retain, that gives us a lot of really good material to say, okay, here are the strategies that can advance and preserve those values. What are their hopes and their dreams and their priorities for the future? Then we take what we learn about Utah's values and we look at all the different ways that we could shape Utah's future around those values. We create what we call scenarios, which are basically pictures of what the future could be. And we say, if we do X, Y, and Z, then the future might look like this. Or if we do something a little bit differently, then the future will also look a little bit differently. And then we take those scenarios and we give them to the public. We give everyone a voice. We bring everyone to the table and give them the chance to weigh in on what scenarios they want. It's not just about choosing what's your favorite. It's about learning what it takes to actually get to the futures that you might want. We actually had public meetings, neighborhood meetings. People show up at some location, and maps all around the room and on the table, and people come and put uh, their thoughts about how it should grow, where it should be high density here, commercial here, industrial here, roads we need to be able to get through here, and here's the arterial right of ways. So it was a very comprehensive approach and it was bottom up. It was grassroots, it's at the local level of people saying, here's what I want my neighborhood to look like, my community, my city, my county, and the state overall. Often we'd see people come up after the two hour session and say, I see the world differently than I did a couple of hours ago. I've heard some perspectives that I didn't hear before. And I recognize that these issues are more challenging than I thought. We gave them a roadmap for a conversation. We asked them to 
sit around their dining room table and have a discussion. What do you want your neighborhood to look like? And what are the trade-offs? And there are always trade-offs. It makes us leaders, right? We all have some leadership role in defining our future. But over time, we began and continued to refine a strategy. The result of this process is a vision that has buy-in not just from a few select leaders, but from everyone across the state. We've all had a chance to weigh in and decide what we want the future to be, and now we have a strategy and a plan to be able to make that happen. We initially developed the quality growth strategy. Utah continued to boom. We were growing better, and then came the major recession. All the visioning work sort of unwound everywhere, and so we designed Your Utah, Your Future to re-lift up the visions in Utah. There were a lot of people who were new to the state who hadn't been through that process and other people who had forgotten about it. In Your Utah, Your Future, we took this same process and we applied it statewide to a broader range of topics and we were looking out to the year 2050. It brought together over 400 experts and leaders across those 11 topics working on eight action teams to help develop scenarios for the future. We have almost 53,000 people that participated in what was the largest grassroots survey ever done in America. There are a lot of projects that we have been working on for the last seven years that have come out of your Utah, your future. Everything from working on disaster resilience, future of education, point of the mountain visioning, visioning for Utah County, and even more recently now we're looking at how to keep our housing more affordable going forward. The model and the process that Envision Utah created has been followed and copied and relied on across the country because it actually works. It had never been done before to that scale and with that much public engagement. In Envision Utah speak, the process is a capital T and a capital P. It's the process. That has percolated and become part of the way that we do all of our work in the planning space in this community. It's become a way of life. Some people call it the Utah way of thinking about and making decisions. I still get calls from other parts of the country asking about how did Utah do it? How did they become the gold standard? The process was honest. The people were honest. We held each other to a standard of honesty about the scenarios that were being crafted. And it continues to be honest. I love being able to look around and see the fruits of everyone's forethought and careful planning over the last 25 years. In the late 90s, there were projections done of where we would be today. And if you look at what actually happened based on the visioning work that Envision Utah undertook, the way it's turned out is very different than what was projected. We've seen real changes on the ground in terms of the amount of land being consumed. Without Envision Utah, I don't believe we would have the light rail transit system we have. We've reduced our travel times overall. We've cut our emissions in half. The commuter front runner rail. We've cut our water use significantly per person. The efficiency of our infrastructure system. We've improved our housing mix so it's more affordable than it would have been otherwise. The ability to model population growth, population projections, economic trends. Those are all legacies of Envision Utah to date. And then with all the work that continues to happen, We'll get more in the future. Having taken over as CEO in 2020, I have the good fortune of building on so much good prior work that has happened. Envision Utah's reputation and the success of our work creates a great base to go forward and tackle the challenges that we face today. But our work is never done. We're still a growing state. We still have challenges. The future is always there to prepare for. Always looking forward always thinking about how we can make life better for the next generation. We've had a phenomenal 25 years, and let's make the next 25 years even better. I've said before, and I still firmly believe, the best is yet to come. <laughs>